That's it. Thank you. So, uh, best to play ball than try to play to a jury of your peers. Tom Belisa says the Wilpons are wise not to play games here because in this anti rich environment, the jury, well, might have been blinded and might have blinded them. Uh, what, what do you think of this on this unusual settlement where they were all ready to go to trial? You know what, Neil? It's great to see you. And, you know, in an environment like this where, you know, you're penalized if you do well, I think the lawyers did a great job in having them set out of the case because if you look at it entirely, you know, with their $178 million claim, I don't know how much comes out of that pocket, but it's not as big as it, what it looks like. You know what surprised me about this case and uh, is that it started out with, you know, the litigants involved wanting a billion dollars. That was our, that was that our, correct, our, yeah. our, our ballpark starting figure. Then it got whittled down, whittled down, whittled down. Um, you know, then they were saying nothing less than $300 million. Then lo and behold, we come to this settlement, which I suspect in a few years is not going to be the number paid, probably a lot less, and, and with rights and offerings and the stuff. That will mean this is very little cash. What do you think? You know, in an environment where, you know, like we're in now, I think that it was better for them to settle. But if you look at it like this, the trustee had a lot of tough claims to prove. Number one, you know what? How are they going to prove that they knew about the fraud when the government did it? You know, that's just ridiculous. Secondly, you know, claiming that these returns were too good to be true, so you should have knew it was a fraud. What about all the other investors who lost money? Thirdly, you know, they recommended their friends to get into this investment. I mean, Sandy Kovacs was going to testify at the trial on their behalf, so a lot of the claims were very tough. And you know what? If we were in an environment where we were pro business, they, they could, probably could have won the case. In other words, you, they feared probably, and maybe you're right about this, that if this went to a trial in this anti-fat cat type of environment, that uh, they might have lost and lost a lot more. So they're going to take their, 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 their bets and go ahead and settle them out. It's unfortunate because they had a lot of their reputations tarnished because of this. And wait secondly, minute, wait, wait, just owning the Mets and what they've done with the Mets, yeah, that's, that's sufficiently right. tarnished that's, that. But, that but, is but, right. But I you, guess you're talking about their their business reputation. Their business reputation. So you know, they didn't want to go any further with that. So they felt best just to settle, put it in the back, and then move on with what they do best, which is you know managing and uh, getting the Mets to win. All right. Well, we hope springs eternal for that. But Tom, you'd be so kind as to stay with us, my friend, because here's one thing: the Wilt Ponds cannot settle their reputation. It took a major hit on this Madoff mess because it proves that the rich, like a lot of folks they call gullible and impressionable, can be stupid as well. They served as the latest, if not most colorful, reminder that the rich indeed can be duped too, just with far bigger numbers. Joining Tom is Jonathan Honig and Lizzie McDonald. Liz, what do you think of that? Yeah, I think, you know, I agree with everything Tommy B says. And also, Tommy you know, B. Tommy B. Tommy B. <laughs> well, it, it, here's the deal. Investors, be they rich, or be they mid-level or, or smaller, uh, they, everybody tends to have goldfish memories. They forget on the way up, everything looks great. I mean, you saw that, for example, with Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen and the dot-com bubble when Remember he sunk that? a lot of money into InfoSpace that was supposed to zoom from the internet, internet to your cell phone. Great idea, but a really bad investment. So even the rich uh, get really duped, and a lot of people in this uh, uh, Madoff scandal got Liz, duped too. Actually, even when a whistleblower that, was telling, even when a, hang on, hang Liz. on, even, hang on, hang, comparison. please hang on. Even when a whistleblower was telling the SEC and laying out the problems for it, even the SEC didn't catch it. All right, go ahead, John. Well, it's not an apt comparison, uh, Liz, to say that Paul Allen, who might have made a bad investment a decade or more ago, is the same in terms of getting duped as someone who was defrauded by a criminal, which is what Bernie Madoff was. I mean, Neil, That's crime is a point. fact of life. That wasn't well, my point. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll rerun the TiVo. Maybe I misheard you wrong. But well, Bernie Madoff was a criminal. Just, my <laughs> other guys is this. I, you know, I, I know Paul Allen. Paul Allen's kind of like a friend of mine. The Wilpons are no Paul Allen. <laughs> and, and Tom, my only point with this is saying, I guess, like Paul Allen to Lizzie's point, on the rich can, can, can sometimes stumble. And I, I, I just think to, to the degree the Wilpons have defies imagination, but be that as it may, um, a lesson here, right? I mean, you deal with a lot of smart, very rich clients as well, but they, they follow the same gut emotions that, that other folks do. They just you know, bet a lot more money, right? I'm Neil, you make, uh, you know, your points are exactly correct, and I agree with Liz, because you got to, let's not forget, 58 billion plus was lost with Madoff. You know, so you had a lot of high net worth individuals, corporations, sovereigns that were invested with him that lost money. And these guys were very, very smart. So it, it does hold true that if you are as smart as you can be, but didn't the you Wilpons can... lose money too? In fact, part of their defense was we're stupid. We're, we're stupid too. We were we were gullible too. Now that's not a, necessarily an adequate defense, but they lost a lot of money too. And I guess they agreed to not 
you know, uh, continue trying to push for money in their own right. Wasn't that the gist of this? That is correct. Yeah, they're claiming they lost 178 million. They want it to be back 162. So ultimately, you don't know what the net number is, but they're not going to lose as much. By the way, that's just one day of hot dogs at City Field, so they can make that up in no time. I mean, it's so outrageous. But anyway, they got off light, Jonathan. That's all I'm saying. They got off light, Neil. They were victims, from, as I understand it. They were victims of Bernie Madoff, like all of Bernie Madoff's other investors were. Uh, Bernie Madoff here is the criminal. And Do you I think like this the show. Are you a Mets fan? I, I can't I can't say that I am Neil. I'm much more of a Sox fan myself, okay. but I'm, well, I'm not a fan of criminals. Then I'll then tell your defense you is reprehensible. But um, <laughs> go ahead, Lizzie. What are you going to say? Uh, well, listen, this is all about you know riding it up in the good times, just ignoring exactly. like the 10 or 15 percent, whatever stupid returns Madoff was promising, and not not saying taking a reality check and say, hey, wait a second, this is good too good to be true. We're keeping irrational hope alive with some of these investments, and the rich get slammed. They got slammed. With made off big time um, Tom a lesson I think for investors even those who are not really up to date on baseball apparently I just found out the Mets in fact we're in a baseball team that uh, <laughs> you you can get you can get hoodwinked here and and very smart folks get hoodwinked the, is there a lesson about what you do to protect yourself from that because whether you have a thick wallet or a small wallet or no wallet this kind of stuff generationally happens a lot. I mean, a situation like this happens, you know, once every 20, 30 years. So, I mean, I don't think, you know, you will ever see something to this magnitude, you know, um, in, in some time. So I don't I, know, buddy. I just think well, we'll just well, find a new villain, a new cockroach. and I, You know, I with think, the regulations you know, now, Neil, well, in place, it's going to be very difficult for something know, like this to happen. I don't know. was supposed to stop a lot of nonsense. They just found more clever yeah. rats. That's all. Go, uh, actually, go ahead, I disagree John. with Tommy. Uh, uh, Bernie Madoff was registered, was regulated by the ICC. Often, more often than not, Neil, the regulation actually makes the frauds more difficult to detect. And to Liz's point, Bernie Madoff was spotted out early as this fraud started to unfold. Those warnings were ignored by the regulators supposedly there to protect us. All right. Well, regardless, play ball. All right. What, what kind of season the Mets going to have? Uh, I hope a good one. What was the year they, just the last week of the season, they completely torpedo. Ask Tommy Belisis, I think. <laughs> Two years in a row. I'm a, I'm a Yankees coach. fan. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I don't know. But whatever. Apparently, there are Mets fans out there who are delighted to hear this news. <laughs> and then others who are not. All right. Uh, then there's